Um, yeah. Thank you uh, to everyone that didn't expect the introduction in French, and uh, I hadn't uh, looked at it since I had written it. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, I am Olivier Gauvin, and I work with uh, Réseau uh, for the last year and a half, and I coordinate the uh, program that uh, I am going to introduce today. And the reason why I am introducing the program because I want to explore with you and to show you what we have done with the research data and how to um, support the uh, youth to create a community that looks like them. So I'm going to start with a little bit of a story. Oh, yeah, it's working. Thank you. So now I can't. So Réseau is an uh, organization from uh, the Montreal uh, area. We're active since uh, 91. Réseau and I are the same age. So uh, we uh, work with um, LGBTQ um, uh, men in order to better uh, sexual health. And we also have programs for trans women in our services. And we coordinate and develop services uh, online with the promotion having to do with several aspects, mental, sexual health. And we started our activities in 91. When we started, uh, we were a group that we were um, mainly fighting AIDS in Montreal. And then in 2010, we started developing services as um, uh, needs grew in the community. And then we changed the uh, name to Réseau. And then we help a larger community. And uh, helping the youth is one of the things um, that helped us widen our mandate because we weren't uh, an organization that was recognized for its approach with uh, youth, but now it's becoming more and more. So uh, the um, program um, for the youth is a community program, a little bit like the alliance that we uh, heard about. It's uh, one of the organizations in Montreal. So what does it mean? It means that uh, our field of action um, means that we can reach uh, youth people, youth, uh, young people of um, varied sexual orientation. And uh, we don't put the unicorn on uh, 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 on our uh, programs. They uh, don't think that they're going to come, that they're going to come to our programs. I mean, we like the unicorn, but I mean, we're not um, married to it. Um, do you actually say that? I don't know. Um, anyway, um, youth uh, program is um, a program uh, for uh, young people from uh, 14 to 18, but I mean, there's, um, we accept anyone really, and uh, it's a program that offers uh, young trans and queer people um, training and uh, ideas so that they can realize their vision and the pr deal with the problems that they have. And uh, through experience and leadership, they uh, become more uh, uh, self-confident and they uh, develop ties, interpersonal uh, ties, and it is a positive community. And so, um, so I haven't told you how we uh, got there. I mean, it didn't just happen. I mean, we gathered uh, around the table and decided to do a project for the youth. I mean, we started uh, through research on homophobia uh, done by uh, the UCAM. And so there were a lot of studies that I wanted to uh, show you. I mean, it's all at the at the end of the presentation. But uh, the study that was the most uh, uh, important was uh, the one that uh, showed that there were three factors that helped the resilience from um, youth uh, from 14 to um, 24 years old in the community, the uh, interpersonal um, ties. Sorry, and uh, openness to diversity and uh, all that, and uh, factors that are linked to mobilization and to be actively active against homophobia, transphobia, and to uh, offer help. 
And when we saw uh, that research, I mean, we realized, I mean, we're not crazy. There are individual factors and collective factors, so we have to make a program, create a program that uh, includes all these factors. And so, uh, as well, uh, what is important to state is that uh, in Quebec, as uh, the situation uh, is probably similar in other parts of Canada, for about 10 years, we had no uh, education on sexuality uh, in the school system. But I mean, of course, uh, even less with the queer. But I mean, for us, we dis saw that uh, youth, I mean, there's some people want to know more about their sexual health and they want to have the correct information. So we decided to uh, create a program that would englobe all this. And so um, we have three types of, actority, of uh, activities, sorry. And it's not working. Yes, the uh, networking activities. Yes, so networking activities. So these activities are activities, punctual activities, and we organize uh, several during the year. Last year we had uh, nine, 400 participants, and it's uh, in order to uh, bring people um, together so that they will enjoy uh, themselves being together. I mean, we have... Uh, uh, we cannot serve uh, alcohol to uh, youth. I mean, I mean, they're 14 years old. Some of them. I mean, we understand that. So um, that was a little um, cocktail evening, and then people would meet, and then they would meet interveners that would be uh, answering their needs, and it would allow us to give resources or to give them prevention material for whatever needs they may have had. So uh, safe drug injection, and I mean, this kind of thing, and that meet trans uh, people need. I mean, we, we didn't go very far. I mean, we asked the youth, I mean, what do you need in your condom bags? I mean, we might need a latex, um, or, and then we just give them a condom. I mean, that's it. And um, that is what we see here, and I mean, with these activities, I mean, we uh, try to meet people, I mean, and another type of activity is, I mean, I'm going to be, every time this works, I mean, I'm stunned, and uh, the youth um, summits, yes, on your left, is uh, our selfie um, picture, and the uh, dam ego portrait. And uh, this is a um, poster from our summit that happened in March of this year. And those are some of the activities and with interveners. And we uh, offer them uh, different activities that meet their needs. And so in the summit in March, uh, we had uh, workshops that would inform them on a uh, reality of uh, bi trans and bi bi spiritual and on their activities and uh, that what is interesting is that for each of the activities we um, we brought people in who lived these realities i mean we had a bi spiritual artist from the uh, quebec region and for uh, trans stories we had a panel of four people who uh, identified themselves as trans. I mean, they have different lives, and but they would share with the youth their experiences and talk about sexual health. I mean, to talk about uh, things that um, youth think about. And uh, on one of, uh, uh, one of the youth drew um, a sea lion, and it was a beautiful sea lion. I mean, it's uh, s the summits we organized two of them, and uh, we got 600 um, participants in the last year. So, I mean, people are really interested to know more about the reality and how to uh, be a better ally for realities that are maybe not their reality. I mean, we uh, did um, workshops on AIDS and. We had about 30 people who wanted to know more about it. I mean, all our, our activities, we bring food in and little things to help the youth to feel more comfortable. 
And if we say to you, we're going to feed you, I mean, people, people do come. And the last uh, category of activity is uh, projects, youth, for youth. I mean, those are activities that uh, take the most uh, time for us. And in all, uh, it is the uh, sexual health aspect. I mean, we finance 20 projects of $500 each for the youth. And I mean, it can be whatever they might want to create. I mean, a sporting activity. They can go to a movie, talk about sexuality uh, through, between women. I mean, they can also just uh, buy sex toys and present them to a group of people who would like to know more about sex toys. I mean, how to uh, discover more lubricants. Um, so, uh, in return, we asked the youth with their participants to come and um, come to the workshops, one on AIDS and um, trans equality, so that everybody who comes into the program has the same basis. And that way, we uh, know that the knowledge of the community will be increased and uh, the youth can um, decimate this knowledge. And uh, the next slide, I mean, there is a few dates. I don't like pie charts, but in all, in the last year, uh, people who came to our activities or participated in a project, we had 248 youth, average age 22. So getting closer to 25, but uh, it's uh, wider than the uh, 14 to 24 that we thought of at the beginning. But all the projects, um, if somebody who was 39 uh, created a pro project for um, young Muslim and colored people in Montreal, I mean, it was very specific, and we had had no project in the past that dealt with this. So it was worth it. And the last thing that I'm going to show you is uh, the second last one, is the references for the studies that uh, we used to uh, build the uh, program. And uh, oh, and so it's the unicorn. Once again, the unicorn has to be everywhere. Otherwise, the youth doesn't recognize our project. We uh, call this a bit an to come and cry uh, during the uh, holidays. Holidays are not always happy for everybody. And, and we hadn't put the uh, unicorn, and we got four people. So we decided to draw the, to have the unicorn everywhere. And if I can uh, uh, end with uh, some remarks that uh, was something we learned with the uh, program is we have to go and get the um, our ideas in the communities. But uh, that is also true with the youth. It's not because they're 14 years old that they don't know where they're headed to. I mean, they have fantastic ideas. I mean, we have young people, 12 years old, who are ready ready to come and participate at, in our summit. I mean, it's amazing because, I mean, uh, for me, I wasn't uh, ready to be part of one of these summits when I was uh, 12 years old, when summit where you have 50 people. And, but our youth knows what they need, and we just have to support them and point them in the right direction and to uh, support their uh, purpose. And I. Uh, Earlier, um, I was amazed when uh, Joanne said that uh, resilience is something very bright in our communities with our youth. And so um, if there is something to do, let's shine. Thank you.